Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. In the clips that I've been putting together, it's a good thing I always check to see if it's facing the right way. If it's not upside down, that will be silly. And the clips that I've been putting uh, on the YouTube, so I've been solving math problems that appear in the official SAT study guide. There are eight exams in this question. Each exam has three math sections, and I will try to go through as many questions as I can. Right now, I'm working on problem that appears in exam number three, section number two, page 522, question number 17. As a matter of fact, I just finished putting together the clip for question number 17, and I sometimes I try to explain too much the different concepts that are that are related to each other and I, I, I there's a limit uh, to, uh, the YouTube will not let me put a clip more than 10, 10 minutes approximately and that was uh, about 13 minutes so let me redo it I'm doing it again and this time I'm gonna have to skip some of the basic concepts question number 17 unlike the question number 18 question number 19 and question number 20 which are also considered hard question in this section the last seven questions are considered hard ones because there are 20 of them first seven are easy the next seven or six or seven are medium the last seven are hard but 18 19 and 20 if you watch my clips you will see that they are not that bad question number 17 is nasty it's only for those people who are very good in geometry who have taken the courses in the geometry and they know the basic concept because that's what I that's the mistake I made a little while ago where I was trying to explain all the basic concepts of geometry and it was too much time. So I'm not going to do that. If it's, if it's too much for you to handle it, just skip this particular question. It's okay to skip a question or two here or there. Uh, the only people who should try to do every single problem on the, on the, on the math are the people who are trying to shoot in the 700s, in the mid, uh, mid, mid, to, mid to high 700s. If you're on the 500 to 600 uh, range, there is no reason why you should try to solve every single problem, especially the hard problems. Uh, that will be that will be a colossal waste of your time. You'll be wa you'll be wise to spend that time on the other problems that you that you have a better shot at getting right. That does not necessarily mean that you just outright skip the last three or four. That that's not what I said. You have to pick and choose, and that comes through practice. Question number seventeen is a good candidate for skipping if it's giving you trouble. Let me do it then. After watching this clip, if it's still giving you trouble, then just forget about it. Because I won't have the luxury of explaining everything. It says, in the XY plane, the line L passes through the origin. Let's screw in line L. Let's make it go through the origin. Line L passes through the origin. And it's perpendicular to the line 4x plus y equal k. So let's draw that line. This is a line, 4x plus y equal k. They don't give this line a name, I'm going to call it line p, because this line is perpendicular to this line. Let's keep it simple. I was going to call it line k, but they're using k in the, in the equation. Then I thought maybe I should call it line m, but I don't want to use the letter m, because m is traditionally used when you write the equation in standard form the letter M is usually used to represent the slope of the line, so I don't want any confusion. Let's call it line P. Let's look at this line P, this line right here. I'm going to rewrite the equation. 4x plus y equals k. 4x plus y equals k. How do you write this equation in, in, in a standard form? Like this. Bring the 4x on the other side. There you go. And if I lost you already, then skip this question. You you are not ready for it. You have not had you have not had the math to do this do this question. For those of you who know what I'm doing, this is the right is in a standard form. And now this tells me that the slope of the line P, this is my line P, slope of line P has to equal negative four right here. If the slope of the line P is negative four, then slope of line slope of 
slope of line L would have to be positive one quarter because their product has to be negative one because they are perpendicular to each other. What else do I know about line L? I'm also told You see, I hadn't, I hadn't read that part yet, because that's how you solve the problem. Don't read the whole problem and try to digest it as once, at once. That's not how one solves the problem. Solving a problem is like having a meal. When the food is put in front of you in the plate, one does not pick up the plate and just go. One takes one bite at a time. One bite at a time in this case, uh, when you're solving a math problem, is read the segment, read the part of the question, read one sentence, understand it, absorb it, digest it, and then when you're ready for the next sentence, that's when you read it. So I, I hadn't read the the last sentence yes, because I, had, I, had, I haven't had a reason for it. So, so far what we read is that line L passes through the origin and is perpendicular to the other line which is this. From there I figured out the, the slope of that line, line P what I'm calling. And once I had the slope of the line P, I found out the slope of the line L which is this. And let's read the rest. If the two lines intersect at point T and T plus 1, T and t plus 1. They intersect right here. Those are the coordinates of that point. What is the slope of the, what is the slope, what is the value of t? Well, we also know that line L, with this line, line L, goes through the origin and this one. So how do you find a slope when you know the two points? Slope of line L has to be the difference in y, which is t plus 1, minus a 0 because it goes through 0, 0 over the x coordinate which is t minus 0 and that has to equal to 1 fourth that has to equal 1 fourth doesn't it? there you go then so let's rewrite this equation I need room or maybe I can continue here so what this boils down to is t plus 1 over t equals 1 fourth. I'm going to cross multiply. When you cross multiply you get 4 times t plus 1 equals t. Let's open the parenthesis. Let's open the parenthesis. So I get 4t and 4. So 4t plus 4 equals t. Subtract t from both sides, in other words bring this t to this side, it becomes 3t and bring this 4 to the other side. How do I bring the 4 to the other side? That's just a grown up way, the adult way of saying subtract 4 from both sides. If I subtract 4 from this side it becomes 0 and if I subtract 4 from this side I get a negative 4 here. So that's what happens. If you bring this 4 to the other side this positive 4 becomes negative 4. So 3t equals negative 4 which means t must equal negative 4 over 3. You see, if you bring t to the other side, we, we get 4t minus t. It gives me 3t equals negative 4. t must equal negative 4 over 3. That's my answer. What else choice is that? A. Answer is A. That's it. I hope you found it helpful. Please send me comments on the YouTube and if you like to get my clips as soon as I upload them on the YouTube immediately subscribe to the channel and you will get them right away. And if you wish to purchase the DVD which contains a solution to the problems that appear in this section, section number 2 of exam number 3 which will contain solution to all the problems, uh, please send me an email and I will take care of it. Alright, thank you.